guys, so today I am here with a little bit of a different video for you. I am actually going to be doing kind of an informational PTSD post-traumatic stress disorder video about service dogs and how they help and about PTSD in general. And at the end, kind of talk a little bit more about Levi's retirement and what we're doing to find a new dog currently. So this is Levi, if you haven't seen him before. His name is, like I said, Levi. We call him Leviathan when he's in trouble. <laughs> and he's gonna sleep on me. <laughs> I'm, he, I'm gonna let him get down while I do the informational part of PTSD because these studio lights are really hot and then I'll bring him back up when I talk specifically about service dogs with PTSD. So let's get started. So first I'm going to talk about what PTSD is because a lot of people don't know and it stands for post-traumatic stress disorder. If someone has PTSD, they most likely got it from being in a dangerous situation and later on after the situation has stopped, they no longer are able to feel like they are safe. So they continue feeling stressed or frightened even though they're no longer in that dangerous situation. The most Frequently heard about PTSD causes are veterans at war, but there are also a lot of other reasons that people don't know about. So you could get PTSD from being involved in a mentally or physically abusive relationship or living situation, if you were raped, if you were involved in a severe car accident, if you were in a, a natural disaster, those type of things can also cause PTSD as well. And there are other things, but it would be a very long list to try and tell you guys all of them. There are also a lot of signs and symptoms for someone that has PTSD. The most commonly known ones would be a feeling of anxiety, panic attacks, anxiety attacks, crowd anxiety, no longer involving themselves in social situations, um, being scared of loud noises. So anytime a loud noise happens that is unexpected, they may flinch. So I'm actually going to read a full list of the symptoms so I make sure I don't forget any of them. And they can include flashbacks, bad dreams, frightening thoughts, avoiding all public situations, crowd anxiety, losing interest in activities that you once enjoyed, panic attacks, anxiety, depression, easily startled, feeling tense and on edge, difficulty sleeping, and having angry outbursts. There are also a few different symptoms for kids with PTSD, and those can include possibly wetting the bed, forgetting or being unable to talk, acting out that scary event at playtime, and being unusually clingy to a parent or other adult. So hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of insight about what PTSD is, and now I'm going to bring Levi back for you guys and talk about the benefits of a PTSD service dog and what exactly they do to to help. Levi Foos, can you come up here? Up, up, up. There he is. Can you sit in? This is Levi. Say hi. They already saw you once, right? Yeah. Levi's in. <laughs> so I'm gonna let him lay down back here. Come here, lots. All right, so you guys can sort of see his vest at least. Oh, there he is. Hi. Now that Levi is here, I am going to talk a little bit about what exactly PTSD service dogs do and how they help. Now, Levi is actually oh, eight years old, I think now, possibly seven or eight, um, and he is going to be retiring soon. So I'm going to talk more about that at the end with you guys, but he is a little bit slower and sleepier because he's getting a little old. He's actually 125 pounds. He's a lab German Shepherd Great Pyrenees mix. Those are at least the three that we know for sure are in him. He could have more. We don't know though. Um, he's a big boy, but he's very good. So some more common things that Levi does specifically for me is in the beginning when my PTSD was a lot worse, right when I first got him, he would alert to get me out of bed. So anytime my alarm went off, he would come up and lick me in the face until I got out of bed because a lot of people with PTSD, with their depression, they have a hard time getting out of bed at all in the morning. And so they actually train the dogs to be able to basically annoy the crap out of you until you get up out of bed and with that they can also train dogs to alert your medication so some dogs are smart enough that they actually are able to figure out like time during the days to tell you and then others you have a phone alarm on your on your phone set and then they will kind of bug you or bring your medication to you until you take it. A main one that a lot of PTSD service dogs do, and if you guys follow our vlogs, you know that Levi does, is he alerts to panic attacks, anxiety attacks. The service dog will do what's called snapping you back into reality. Basically, again, they annoy the crap out of you <laughs> until you stop holding on to whatever um, 
basically when you go into a panic or an anxiety attack, your mind kind of blurs out everything else around you. And so you're kind of not in reality of what's happening and you're just super stressed out. So the service dog will kind of annoy you, put their paw on you or put their head on top of you until you basically snap back into reality so that you're paying attention to what you need to be and you can get out of that anxiety so you don't have an anxiety or panic attack. They can also perform what's called security enhancement tasks and more specifically with Levi his main one is crowd control. So I have severe crowd anxiety and to the point that I did not want to go out into public or I would freak out and basically make a beeline through crowds and lose whoever I was with because I just wasn't paying attention to them. I just wanted to get through it. And so Levi is able to create barriers between me and other people as well as coming and standing in front of me so that people can't come too close to me which is why I much prefer a large PTSD service dog because they're able to create a very big barrier. Um, and then they also, some dogs are trained to walk in circles around you so that if you are particularly stressed out, the dog will walk in circles so that no one can get near you in whatever vicinity of a circle they create. Other security enhancement things that they can do is when you're at counters, they can stand behind you to guard. They will never attack someone, but they can watch basically and alert you if someone is coming up behind you so that you aren't startled because a big part of having PTSD is not liking people in close quarters of you. So turning around to find out that someone is right there in your face can cause you to have <laughs> an anxiety attack. And of course, a more common one as well is just helping with depression in general. Dogs are able to um, lower depression immensely just from the mere aspect of them being there and being able to pet them. There's just something about dogs that calm your your nervous system basically and are able to make your depression less. So that is also a big perk of having a service dog for PTSD. So those are basically all of the things that service dogs for PTSD will do. It is a case by case situation because everyone who has PTSD has it for a different reason and so it can be completely different. Uh, Levi though mainly does those things for me. I have a big problem with loud sounds as well so if I have a startling noise or someone yells and it's unexpected I do flinch and that is worked into his knowing that my moods are heightened and so he will come up to kind of put my attention on him and off of whatever sounds are going on. But in regards to Levi retiring he as many of you guys who follow us, and I know some people may end up seeing this video who don't actually follow our daily vlogs, and so welcome to our channel. I'm actually gonna be putting this on my mom channel and my vlog channel, so welcome to whichever channel you happen to find this on. If you guys don't know, Levi is going to be retiring within the next probably six months. He is, like I said, nearing seven, eight years old. I can't, I'm so bad with numbers, guys. Um, he's nearing seven or eight years old, and because he's 125 pounds, that is near the top of his lifespan. So we are currently training another service dog to take his place. Now, I wanted to talk to you guys briefly about my GoFundMe that I started, and as you guys know, I had a service dog in training, Remington, and she was a lab pointer mix. She was a beautiful dog, and she would have made a great service dog, but the issue was, is weirdly enough with PTSD and having anxiety and panic attacks and stuff, um, there is a point where sometimes you have through your day where you want nothing and no one to touch you. And with Levi, I can easily tell him to go plots and he will stay there, which means lay down in German. Um, he will go stay there and leave me alone. But Remington was actually too attention seeking to the point where she just constantly wanted pets and it could actually make my anxiety worse especially in public if i'm in a situation where i don't need her at that moment and she would constantly paw you and so we had to fail her for me personally we already found her home um, she seems to be very happy there she's only been there one night so far but the first night went really well <laughs> um, but because remington did fail we put a year of work into her and so we only have a short amount of time left which is very stressful. Um, so we are currently trying to raise money to get a Doberman Pinscher, which we went with this breed because they are very affectionate, very loyal dogs, but there's a less chance of having a dog that needs to be pet constantly, as opposed to if I went with a Golden Retriever or a Labrador or a German Shepherd, they have a bigger chance of wanting to be pet constantly. So we decided to go with the Doberman Pinscher because they are highly trainable. They are affectionate, loyal, like I said, but they still have some independence in them with a lower chance of 
them needing constant attention because they're not typically those type of dogs. So we have to go either one or two ways. We need to go with either an older dog, meaning that we can't go to rescues or shelters because a dog can have unseen situations that they were in that we wouldn't know till later on, possibly a few months or a few years down the road after the dog is certified that they actually had an issue with the situation and it could be um, very bad. So we can't go with that. We need to go with a breeder with an older dog so we know exactly what has happened. And because of that, the dog is more expensive. Or we need to go with a puppy. And because my mom is a dog trainer, but the short amount of time, because she does have a full-time job outside of training dogs, she does not have the time to do the two, three week crazy crash course with the dog to train um, their basic obedience. So we need to pay someone else to do it so my mom can then get the dog and then focus on service dog training. And because of that, again, we need to pay more. Um, and also with Dobermans, it's a much bigger chance going with a breeder, going with a rescue or a shelter because they have health issues sometimes. And so you need to make sure that you know exactly where that dog came from so you don't have that issue. And again, that's where more money comes Comes into play. My mom has been awesome enough to be able to help me out with paying with the upfront costs so that we can get the dog in training right away because this dog needs to be ready probably around May of 2015 which is very soon. Um, so she is going to help with that and then we're going to use the GoFundMe to be able to pay her back because it is an expensive process. So your guys' help would be greatly appreciated. I also wanna let you guys know that if we raise more than the allotted amount on my GoFundMe, I'm going to donate that money back to somebody else who's looking for a service dog. So if I don't end up needing all that money or we have more money donated than was originally the goal, then I will put it back to someone with a service dog. And if you guys watch our vlog channel, then you know that we have a lot of people within our Flutter fam that are actually trying to raise money for service dogs. So I would like to be able to donate the money to one of you guys. So the link will be in the bottom bar below for you guys and I appreciate any help you guys are able to do whether it's just sharing this video or sharing the actual GoFundMe or donating. Anything is greatly appreciated and I really just love you guys from the bottom of my heart. It baffles me how much some of you have even helped already. So thank you again. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was informational. I hope you guys are able to learn something. And Levi, you wanna say goodbye? Can you say goodbye, Sitson? There you go. Okay, say bye-bye.